Mr. Chairman, introducing Daniel Gotcha. Thank you, Mr. Gotcha. Good morning. Good morning. This is the filler. Uh, in eight of the last ten years, uh, claims have exceeded provisions from natural disasters, ex amounting to over a billion dollars in losses. As natural disasters increase in frequency and severity, do you consider it viable in the long term to continually raise premiums or alternatively not offer insurance to uh, vulnerable areas? Or will we, the shareholders, continue to wear the losses? Do you want to answer that? I'm not sure I understand the, I'm not sure I understand the question. Can, can, can we perhaps ask for that again? I'm not sure that sure. we fully there understand. There's right next to you. In eight of the last ten years, claims have exceeded provisions for natural disasters amounting to over a billion dollars in losses. Last year being the worst, over 500 million, which Mr Wilkins alluded to. As natural disasters increase in frequency and severity, do you consider it a viable long-term solution to continually raise premiums, or will you not offer insurance in certain areas? Right. Or do we weather losses? Thank you. Um, I think that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very good question around what's happened from a, um, from a perils perspective over the last few years. And we have seen uh, a number of perils. Part of, uh, part of the effect of, of those perils is the urban concentration that we're now seeing with uh, over 75% of the Australian population living within 50 kilometres of the eastern seaboard. So when an event hits, it is going to be more costly today than it has been uh, in the past, so that's one part of it. The second thing in terms of, of premiums, we actually believe that a premium is a risk signal. It is sending a signal to our policyholders around the risk that, that they are, are taking. So for those who do choose to, to live uh, in a, a more risk-prone area, we do tend to charge more uh, in, that, uh, in that region. Having said that, the influence is really uh, more around what we see coming through from our claims cost rather than, uh, uh, than anything else. Uh, so I think that uh, what we always see is a combination uh, of effects. Uh, what we did see in the 2015 financial year, and we've been quite clear about that, is a perils bill that was much higher than we expected. Uh, clearly, we didn't charge for that. Uh, because they are a random walk, that doesn't mean that we're going to increase our, uh, our premiums across the board uh, to cover that, because we likewise have good years where it goes the other way. Uh, what we will do, though, is we'll continue to uh, try to charge what we believe is the appropriate price for the risk that is being presented. You've had two good years in 10. Well, I think... Um, uh, when you look at the, uh, the way in which an insurance uh, cycle works from a, from a perils perspective, you need to take a much longer term view than, uh, than purely 10. And uh, I think the insurance industry has been around for well over 300 years. And uh, uh, on that basis, uh, it's got it more right than wrong. Given the impacts climate change is clearly having on IAG's profitability, why is it that climate change is not mentioned at all in the 2015 annual report? and only once in the 2015 annual review? Um, we, uh, we believe in, uh, in climate change. We think that there is, uh, there is something happening. We can't quantify uh, what it is. What we have done, though, is uh, we've been quite active in terms of the, uh, uh, the various approaches that we have taken to try to make people aware of risk and the leadership role that we've taken in, in terms of trying to inform the community as well as to um, inform the, the government. Um, giving you a, a few examples uh, to try to, uh, to cover where you may be wanting to go with, with this question. Um, we are a signatory and an, a, an initial signatory to the United Nations Principles for Sustainable Insurance, uh, which was launched as part of the UN Environmental Program Finance Initiative. And the PSI, Principle for Sustainable Insurance, is a catalyst for creating a more risk-aware and resilient society. Um, one of our uh, executive team, Leona Murphy, is actually co-chairman of, uh, of that initiative. And um, 
We're looking to deliver outcomes that help communities better prepare for and respond to risks, protect the environment and sustain economies. That's a stated part of the charter that we have. Uh, in addition to that, IAG is also a signatory uh, to the Principles for Responsible Investment, the UN Principles for Responsible Investment, which is an international network of investors working uh, for six principles of responsible investment, uh, putting it into practice. And the goal of that group is to understand the implications of sustainability for investors and support signatories uh, to that um, uh, principle uh, to incorporate those issues into their investment decision-making process. And finally, and, uh, and I mentioned it in, um, in my address, um, we were the uh, driving force behind the establishment of the Australian Business Roundtable for uh, Disaster Resilience and uh, Sustainable Communities, um, which received the Sasakawa Award through the research work that uh, that, that group has done. Uh, a Productivity Commission inquiry has been held into natural disasters and the cause of natural disasters in Australia. So I think that IAG is doing quite a lot on the, uh, on the sustainability uh, front. Stop. Just not mentioning it in your annual report, though. Well, we mentioned a number of those initiatives uh, that I, I talked about uh, in the annual report. One more question, if I may. One more. Given what you've just stated, Mr Wilkins, is IAG still invested in coal mines? And do they still underwrite coal mining projects? Um, our, our basic philosophy is that we, uh, we are not... Um, uh, exposed to, to mining as, a, as underwriting. It's not a risk that we like to take, uh, so we, we don't do that. I can't tell you what our investment uh, book looks like because uh, we use outsourced investment managers uh, for that. However, I can tell you uh, that um, in terms of one of those outsourced investment managers um, is Generation Investment Management, uh, uh, which is uh, an international uh, investment partnership chaired by the former uh, Vice President of the United States, Al Gore, which is a, uh, a sustainable uh, investment fund, and IAG was one of the initial seed investors uh, into that fund. So you don't know? I don't specifically know because uh, uh, we index uh, our, uh, uh, our investments rather than manage them ourselves. Mr Gotch, I, I do understand you. your, your, uh, from where you're coming and in fact thank you for letting us know beforehand uh, that, that these were the issues you were seeking to address. So as I hopefully you can tell, we, we far from minimise this issue and indeed we focus right across the whole, the whole range of the whole spectrum and, and are recognised um, by, by others for the work that we do. So it's not something that we simply take lightly. Thank you. Thank you. Microphone one.